This is a podcast on private pensions and pension contributions. For a transcript, email info at ons.gov.uk. Pension systems are designed to provide an income to people who are retired. Most people in the UK are entitled to some state pension when they reach retirement. People are also encouraged to save in a private pension, which we will focus on in this podcast. When we refer to private pensions, we are talking about the types of pension that are provided by employers in the public and private sector, or by insurance companies for the self-employed and others. The amount of income that people receive from a private pension, if any, depends on how much they have built up during their working lives. In the UK, the pension system is complicated. There are two main types of private pension, occupational and personal. Occupational pensions are all sponsored or organised by an employer. They are a form of workplace pension. Occupational pensions may be either defined benefit or defined contribution. Defined benefit schemes are those where the scheme rules specify the rate of benefits to be paid, for instance in relation to final salary. Defined contribution pensions, also known as money purchase, are those where the pension will depend on investment performance and any annuity that is purchased. The other main type of pension is personal pensions, which include stakeholder pensions. Personal pensions are those where individuals enter into a contract with an insurance company. They may be arranged by an employer, in which case they are known as group personal pensions. Alternatively, they may be individual personal pensions, which are not employer-sponsored. All personal pensions are defined contribution. The latest official estimates on the number of people contributing to private pensions are from the 2009 Occupational Pension Scheme Survey and returns to HM Revenue and Customs for the tax year 2008-2009. First, looking at defined benefit schemes, we see that there were 7.7 million active members. This pie chart shows that over two-thirds of these were working in the public sector. Second, looking at defined contribution schemes, we see that there were 7.4 million active members. Most of these were contributing to personal pensions, with just 1 million currently contributing to defined contribution occupational schemes. The government's workplace pension reforms, which will be phased in between October 2012 and September 2016, aim to increase pension membership in the private sector. All employers will be required to automatically enrol their employees into pension schemes. These may be either existing schemes or NEST, a new defined contribution occupational pension scheme. Most of the increase in membership is expected to be in defined contribution schemes. For employees, contributions may be paid by the employee, the employer or both. Employees contribute to defined benefit and defined contribution pensions. Which type of pension they contribute to depends on what is available from their employer. For the self-employed and those who are not working, there are no employer contributions. At present, self-employed people can only contribute to personal pensions. However, from the end of 2011, they will also be able to contribute to NEST. Now we will look at differences between contribution rates in defined benefit and defined contribution occupational pension schemes in the private sector in 2009, using data from the Occupational Pension Scheme Survey. In this survey, contribution rates are the percentage of gross salary, excluding bonuses, that is contributed to the pension scheme. Total contributions are made up of employee contributions and employer contributions. First, focusing on employees, this slide shows that the average employee in private sector defined benefit schemes contributed 5.2% of their salary to their pension in 2009. This compared with 2.9% for employees in defined contribution schemes. So, there is a difference of over 2% in the contribution rates of employees in defined benefit and defined contribution schemes. The difference between the contribution rates of employers in defined benefit and defined contribution schemes is even greater, over 11%. Generally speaking, higher contribution rates result in higher pensions. There are a number of reasons why contribution rates are higher in defined benefit schemes than in defined contribution schemes. 
the most important factor is risk. In defined benefit pension schemes, the sponsoring employer must pay out pensions at the agreed rate, for example, 50% of final salary, even if funds do not perform as well as expected, investment risk, or scheme members live longer than expected, longevity risk. Employer contributions tend to be high to cover such risks. In defined contribution pensions, the members bear all the investment risk and may be seriously affected by, for example, a stock market crash. Members also face the risk of annuity rates being low at the time they wish to buy an annuity, or, if they opt for income drawdown instead of an annuity, the risk of living longer than expected and finding that their funds run out. This podcast is based on information from Pension Trends, Chapters 6 and 8. Chapter 6 looks in more detail at the government's workplace pension reforms and the future of private pensions. It addresses questions like, will defined contribution pensions be dominant by the end of this decade? And what contribution rates are required for defined contribution pensions to provide enough income in retirement? Chapter 8 compares current contribution rates in defined contribution occupational schemes with the statutory minimum contribution rates that will be required in defined contribution schemes under the workplace pension reforms, starting from 2012.